हेलो एवरीवन माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर एम सृजन कुमार माय एजुकेशन बैकग्राउंड इज फार्मेसी टुडे टॉपिक इज गैलानिकल्स लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द टॉपिक मूविंग ऑन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ गैलानिकल्स फर्स्ट वी विल अंडरस्टैंड द टर्मिनोलॉजी मेडिसिनल प्लांट एक्सट्रैक्ट्स व्हाट आर दिस मेडिसिनल प्लांट एक्सट्रैक्ट्स एंड हाउ आर दे ऑप्टेन these medicinal plant extracts are obtained by extraction process now what do you mean by the term extraction extraction is a term it is used pharmaceutically involves separation of medicinally active portions of plant or animal tissues from the inactive or inert components by using selective solvents in standard extraction process by employing standard extraction process and using some selective solvents you are going to extract a medicinally active portion from plant or animal tissues okay that is about your extraction the products so obtained from plants are relatively impure liquids semi solids or powders intended only for oral or external use whatever the products that have been obtained after subjecting the plant material for extraction process okay the so far obtained products may be impure liquids it may be a impure semi solid or it may be an impure powder okay that are intended for oral or external use these include classes of preparations known as what are the process classes of preparations that are included for the preparation of this so called liquid semi solids or powders are decoctions infusions fluid extracts tinctures pillular nothing but semi solid extracts and powder extracts such preparations properly have been called galanicals the so called preparations like your decoctions infusions fluid extracts tinctures are so called called as galanicals this particular terminology galanicals is named after galen the secondary he is a secondary century greek physician so what do you mean by the term galanicals a galanicals is a standard medicinal preparation it might be an extract or tincture containing usually one or more active constituents of a plant and made by a process that leaves the inert and other undesirable constituents of the plant undissolved what do you mean by galanicals these are nothing but standard medicinal preparation when you say medicinal preparation it might be an extract or it might be a tincture what it contains it contains one or more active constituents of the plant okay what is the process involved whatever the process that is applied for the preparation of this galanicals okay this particular process will leave the inert and undesirable constituents of the plant which are undissolved okay it will only look for the active moieties okay and it will leave all your inert and undesirable constituents okay that inert and undesirable constituents will be removed based upon the solubility of the constituents okay the undissolved constituents will be left aside okay this is the definition about your galanicals now we are going to discuss about extraction processes the first extraction process that we are going to discuss is infusions so what is the general method for preparing fresh infusion there are some steps involved the first step you need to take coarsely powdered drug about 50 grams and it should be transferred to a vessel that has a cover with it and after that the coarsely powdered crude drug should be moistened with 50 ml of cold water and it is allowed to stand for 15 minutes then you need to add 900 ml boiling water 
to the above vessel containing your coarsely powdered drug along with 50 ml of cold water and the vessel should be covered tightly and allowed to stand for 30 minutes. The mixture is strained and enough water is passed to make the infusion measure 1000 ml. The mixture is strained means nothing but adding one thing to the other to make it better. Okay. So, the final measured volume we require is 1000 ml. The remaining amount of water should be added to make a measure of 1000 ml. Some drugs are supplied accurately weighed in muslin bags like what I said coarsely powdered drug weighing about 50 grams. Okay. In order to prepare specific amounts of infusion, some drugs are supplied accurately weighed. Okay. Some as such in order to prepare infusion preparations. If the activity of the infusion is affected by the heat of the boiling water, cold water should be used. Now after preparation, if you come across something like the activity of the constant that is present in your coarsely powdered drug is affected due to boiling. So you need to replace the boiling water with cold water. As fresh infusions do not keep well, they should be made extemporaneously and in small quantities at the time of use. As fresh infusions do not keep well means nothing but they will get degraded immediately. So it is this fresh infusion should not be prepared and stored for one day or two day. So before taking the infusion, that particular infusion should be prepared extemporaneously nothing but prepared by a pharmacist when you are about to take the infusion. At the time of use, you need to prepare your infusions. That's the reason it has given a name called as fresh infusions. Infusions should be prepared at the time of use. Next, coming to the preparation of concentrated infusions. The official monographs also recognize certain concentrated infusions in which 25% alcohol is added during or after the infusion process and then diluted as per pharmacopoeia official requirement. So if you check with some official monographs, they have recognized that there are some concentrated infusion preparations in that monographs. Okay. On observation, they found that that particular concentrated infusions contain 25% alcohol. That 25% alcohol is added to the infusion during or after the infusion process. And this particular concentrated infusion can be diluted as per the pharmacopoeia or official requirement. Concentrated infusions are especially prepared in cases in which the active and desirable principles of drug are equally soluble in water and in the menstruum used for both concentrates and infusions. So in which cases you, these concentrated infusions can be prepared? These concentrated infusions can be prepared in, ca in case where your active and desirable principles of your drug are equally soluble in water and in the menstruum which are used for both your concentrates and infusions. So in such conditions where your concentrated infusions are prepared. Okay. Coming to the next step called as evaporation which is an important step in your infusion. Okay. So one quality relevant parameter is the evaporation of the elute from the soft texture. Elute is nothing but solution obtained after the elution. Okay. Whatever solution that is obtained from the solution uh, elution, that solution should be evaporated. So it should be evaporated and evaporation is a state of art. Okay. And you need to apply what cautious evap vacuum evaporation in which evaporation temperature should not exceed 55 degree centigrade. The temperature in relation to the evaporation time is of special importance for the quality of this 
step in order to ensure quality for the infusion preparations okay your temperature in relation to the evaporation time is very important especially if the extract contains volatile or thermoliable constituents especially it is indicated in which cases in the case where extract contains volatile or thermoliable constituents okay in such conditions this temperature in relation to the evaporation time is a critical step next we will move on to another extraction process called decoction extraction process called as decoction is a familiar one in day to day life we will come across preparation of green tea it is a decoction process okay of the traditional methods of extraction of medicinal plant materials for making an aqueous extract decoction is the one of the most described when you see the traditional methods of extraction process nowadays for medicinal plants that to making an aqueous extract so decoction is the one of the most preferable extraction process so decoction is a water based preparation to extract active compounds from medicinal plant materials as we said in the first point in order to prepare aqueous extract we employ what decoction process so by that we can say that decoction is a water based preparation to extract what active compounds from medicinal plant materials in this process the liquid preparation is made by boiling the plant material with water how the liquid preparation is made in this process just you need to boil the plant material with water where you will be getting something called as liquid preparation decoction is the method of choice when working with tough and fibrous plants in which conditions for which kind of plant materials you need to employ this decoction process okay the plant materials like which are tough and fibrous plants barks roots and with plants that have water soluble chemicals okay the plant materials like tough and fibrous plants barks roots and plant material which contain water soluble chemicals for such type of plant materials and for such type of extraction of constituents water soluble constituents from the plants you need to employ what decoction process the plant material is generally broken into small pieces or powdered okay this is the next step ma any plant material you come across that particular plant material first it should be broken into small pieces okay if possible it should be converted to a powder based upon the properties of your plant material okay for some plant material as such you need to uh, cut and you need to drop it into the water for some plant materials you can also go for comminution into a powder particles okay so different methods have been described for the preparation of decoctions there are different type of methods are there we'll see one method now in the upcoming slide coming to the steps involved in decoction process first first step is understand what an herbal tea is and herbal tea does not have tannin or caffeine okay so first we need to understand what do you mean by herbal tea herbal tea is the one which does not have tannin or caffeine but does have varying amounts of antioxidant depending on how the herb is processed herbal tea will be rich in antioxidants and this particular richness of antioxidants in your liquid extract will be based upon the how the herb is processed second understand the purpose of the decoction method first you need to understand the purpose of decoction method in addition to the traditional recipe for brewing tea okay we know that what is the traditional recipe for brewing tea one cup boiling water poured over one tablespoon dried herb or two tablespoon fresh herb which may also choose to make an infusion which is stronger than a tea or a decoction okay just taking some one cup of boiling water poured over one uh, tablespoon of uh, dried herb and two or two tablespoon of fresh herb okay you may choose to make an infusion 
okay nothing but adding boiling water to your uh, herb that is nothing but called as that particular procedure is nothing but called as an infusion okay and this particular infusion prepared in such a way is stronger than tea or a decoction the decoction method is used for hard woody substances we need to understand the purpose of decoction method and for which material this decoction method should be employed okay so this decoction method is used for hard woody substances such as roots bark and stems that have constituents that are water soluble and non volatile okay what type of materials here hard woody substances like root and bark and stems okay apart from that the plant material which have constituents that are water soluble and they should be non volatile this is the second step next decoctions extract mainly mineral salts and bitters principles decoctions are intended for immediate use the decoctions prepared are intended for immediate use and what decoctions will extract they will extract mainly mineral salts and bitter principles and if you don't want to use immediately you can store this decoction a maximum of 72 hours in the refrigerator okay now the next step is make a decoction the basic recipe for a decoction includes 1 pint water 1 pint is equal to 568 ml of water and 1 ounce of herb or root 1 ounce of herb or root 1 ounce is equal to 28.35 grams of herb or root 28.35 grams of herb or root place the water into a pot made from non reactive metal such as stainless steel or enamel do not use aluminium so in order to prepare decoction you need three things the first one is water how much quantity of water to be taken one pint water one pint is equal to 568 ml of water and next thing you need herb or root okay and the quantity is about 1 ounce 1 ounce is equal to 28.35 grams okay and the third thing what you need is a particular pot okay it should be made from non reactive metals such as stainless steel or enamel okay you should not use aluminium okay these are the requirements for preparing your decoction next cut or crush the herb or root and add it to the water in the pot do not cut or crush the herb or root in advance as vital constituents can be lost so next step what you need to do you need to just cut the herb or root or you you can also crush it okay and this cutting and crushing should be done during the time of the preparation it should not be done earlier when you do it earlier okay what happens this particular herb will lose its vital constituents okay so always during the time of preparation itself you need to cut or crush the herb or root now next turn on the heat to medium simmer your decoction with the lid off until the volume of water is reduced by 1 quarter now the next thing what you need to do turn on the heat to medium and simmer with the decoction with the lid off you should not keep the lid and allow it for simmer okay the decoction till the volume of water is reduced by 1 quarter so how many quarters left here 3 quarters of a pint remains so because 1 quarter has been reduced on your decoction subjected to heating next cool and strain cool and strain store in the fridge for not more than 72 hours after that just you need to collect the pot and you need to go for cooling the pot and after the strain it and store it in a refrigerator for not more than 72 hours the next step take in divided doses according to use take in divided doses according to the use next fourth step use a decoction when an herb is better simmered than steep to extract their specific nutrients for example oat straw contains silica which requires simmering to be released into the water so any decoction when you subject for a herb it should be better simmered than steep to extract their specific constituents or nutrients 
for example oatstra contains silica which requires simmering to be released into the water in order to expect some constants to be released into the water you need to go for simmering and you should not steep to extract their specific nutrients okay in addition red clover blossoms must be simmered to extract their copper and iron and dandelion roots should be simmered to prepare a pleasant coffee like beverage okay there are simmering is a main important step here okay in addition a red clover blossom is a blossom which is used for digestive uh, disorders and all uh, it must be simmered till you get the extract of copper and iron and dandelion root should be simmered to prepare a pleasant coffee like beverage okay so you need to understand the decoction process and accordingly you need to subject it for simmering process and the fifth step is you have completed with the preparation of the decoction and the decoction is ready now okay this is how the steps involved in the preparation of decoction process clear next we will move on to the extraction process called maceration so what do you mean by maceration maceration is an extractive technique that is conducted at room temperature it consists of immersing a plant in liquid it might be either water oil alcohol etc inside an airtight container for a variable time based on the plant material and liquid used so what do you mean by maceration maceration is an extracting technique it will be carried out at room temperature this maceration technique it consists of an airtight container into that you need to place your plant material along with the liquid okay and the time will be based upon the plant material and liquid use okay how much time this maceration should be subjected to will be based upon the type of plant material and the liquid use now coming to the general procedure for maceration general procedure for maceration it is also called a steady state extraction steady state extraction what is the first step involved here plant material should be taken and it should be either crushed or cut it into small pieces or moderately coarse powder okay that plant material it might be either crushed or it might be either cut it into small pieces or you can also take moderately coarse powder after that this particular plant material should be transferred into a closed vessel should be transferred into a closed vessel after that whole of the selected menstruum is added whole of the selected menstruum is added menstruum is nothing but solvent as i said before so entire solvent should be added to the closed vessel allowed to stand for 7 days shaking occasionally so after adding the menstruum this particular vessel is allowed to stand for how many days 7 days on occasional shaking after that liquid is strained off okay you should, you need to strain off the liquid and the solid residue obtained should be pressed okay recover as much as occluded solution okay after obtaining the solid residue that mark should be pressed and you need to recover as much as occluded solution after that again it should be strained and expressed okay again it should be strained and expressed liquids and mixed next step is clarified by subsidence or filtration next step is clarified by subsidence or filtration followed by evaporation and followed by concentration evaporation followed by concentration so in a simple way what are the steps involved first you need to take crushed material or a cut material or a coarsely powdered material that should be transferred into a closed vessel okay to that vessel entire menstruum should be added that is nothing but solvent to be added and this particular vessel should be set aside for 7 days with occasional shaking after that what you are going to do you need to strain off the liquid and after that again you need to press the mark mark is nothing but the residue obtained after the pressing of any substance is called as mark okay that should be pressed as much as possible to get the occluded solution and again it should be strained and expressed and after that it should be subjected for filtration after filtration evaporation after evaporation you need to concentrate the uh, residue 
okay after the evaporation you need to concentrate the residue or extract this is the general procedure involved in the preparation of maceration clear yeah next maceration process for organized and unorganized crude drugs so what do you mean by organized crude drugs organized crude drugs are the drugs which are having defined cellular structure whereas unorganized drugs are non cellular so the examples for your organized drugs are bark and roots and for the examples for your unorganized crude drugs are gum and resin what do you mean by organized drugs which are having defined cellular structure the examples are your bark and root unorganized drugs which doesn't have definite cellular structure they are non cellular okay the examples are gum and resin now application of your maceration process for organized and unorganized drugs first let us see the process for your organized drugs the first step drug and whole of the menstruum is taken and it is transferred to a vessel and it is kept aside for 7 days with occasional shaking straining the liquid and pressing the mark mixing the liquid and clarified by subsidence for filtration filtrate is not subjected to volume this is a process involved for organized drug it is same as the general process now process for unorganized drug the examples are your gum and resin drug should be taken with 4 by 5th of menstruum shake occasionally during 2 to 7 days as specified decant the liquid mark is not pressed filter the liquid and pass more menstruum through filter to volume so here the process is different for unorganized drug what we are going to do you need to take the drug and you need to take 4 by 5th quantity of your menstruum and you need to shake occasionally from ranging from 2 to 7 days okay and after that you need to decant the liquid here the mark step is not present in unorganized drug you should not press the mark okay filter the liquid as such and pass more menstruum through filter to volume then after that you need to filter it and after filtering you need to pass the remaining menstruum whatever that is because only 4 by 5th has been added the remaining menstruum should be passed to make up the volume here in the first step for your organized processes there is nothing to adjust to volume but for unorganized here there is something to adjust it to volume at the last this is the difference between the processes for your organized and unorganized drugs clear now coming to the large scale extraction procedure for maceration process the first one is circulatory extraction okay the efficiency of extraction in a maceration process can be improved by arranging the solvent to be continuously circulated through the drug as indicated okay in order to improve the efficiency see any extraction process what you need to achieve you need to achieve the efficiency of your extraction process in order to achieve the efficiency the step that has been taken in circulatory extraction process is that your solvent has been continuously circulated through the drug solvent is pumped from the bottom of the vessel and is distributed by spray nozzles over the surface of the drug the movement of the solvent reduces boundary layers and the uniform distribution minimizes local concentration in a shorter time so if you can see the figure here in this particular figure there is an extraction chamber is there inside which your uh, drug has been enclosed okay so above you can see on the top you can see spray nozzles are present in order to spray your solvent onto your drug that is packed in the extractor okay and the solvent will be pumped from the bottom of the vessel okay and after pumping from the bottom of the vessel it will be passed through this spray nozzles and it will be sprayed onto your surface of the drug the movement of the solvent what is the purpose of this solvent movement of the solvent from top it will reduce the boundary layers and it will achieve the uniform distribution okay and it will minimize local concentration in a shorter period of time this is the mechanism involved in circulatory extraction process clear next is multi stage extraction process so the steps involved in multi stage extraction process are 
first fill the extractor with crude drug add solvent and circulate run off to receiver so first can you see the below image you can find an extractor the first image will talk about your extractor and this one two and three these are nothing but receiver compartments so in the extraction chamber you need to add what your crude drug and followed by solvent then you need to allow it to circulate so on circulation what happens from this extraction chamber the solvent moves to one two and three receiver compartments after that you need to just turn off the receiver okay of your extraction chamber then again you need to refill the extractor with solvent again you need to allow it for circulation again you need to turn off the receiver okay then remove drug from the extractor and recharge so remove the drug from the extractor previous and you need to recharge with the new one and after that you need to return the solution from receiver one you need to just open the value and you need to return the solution that is present in receiver one to the extractor then after allowing it for extractor solution then you need to remove for evaporation then after that return solution from receiver two ma to the extractor and circulate so one is over now you are going to return the solution from two and when you are about to return the solution from two to extractor you need to turn off the receiver for one otherwise from two it will go to one so when you turn off the receiver for one ultimately from two it will go to the extraction chamber okay then after that return the solution from receiver 3 to the extractor and circulate here when you return from 3 to the extractor you need to turn off receiver 2 okay add fresh solvent to the extractor and circulate run off to receiver 3 again you need to add fresh solvent to the extractor and again you need to circulate run off to receiver 3 remove the drug from the extractor and recharge and repeat the cycle okay in this way you need to keep on repeat the cycle and you keep on uh, recharging the drug uh, uh, recharging your solvent and uh, opening the valves to go to 1 2 3 and circulation and after that returning from 1 after that returning from 2 and after that returning from 3 again from the extractor you need to up the value to 3 and again you need to circulate for 1 2 3 this is entire this particular cycle will be repeated multiple times till you get your final product this is your multi stage extraction process clear next extraction battery extraction battery is the another process in maceration okay in the normal percolation process the percolate is very dilute solution while the ideal situation is to obtain the maximum concentration possible if you check with the normal percolation process okay whatever percolate that has been obtained it is a very dilute solution okay so ideal situation is the one when you are going to get your maximum concentration possible that is our desired target okay so continuous extraction devices of battery type are used when large amount of single material are handled so when you come across this continuous extraction battery type of process when you are having large amount of single material to be handled in that particular conditions you will come across this extraction battery process such devices can be achieved by treating percolation as a multi stage process in an extraction battery process a series of vessels is used and extraction is semi continuous so whenever you come across large amount of uh, single material to be handled at the same time whenever you are expecting some concentrated uh, extract so in that conditions you can go for subjecting to extraction battery especially this particular extraction battery will consists of series of vessels ma okay and the process is a semi continuous process an extraction battery coming to the description of your extraction battery an extraction battery consists of number of vessels with interconnecting piping ma so this extraction battery consists of number of vessels with interconnecting piping vessels are so arranged that solvent can be added to and the product taken from any vessel okay the vessels as i said the piping is arranged in such a way that to the vessels okay the solvents can be allowed allowed to be added to any 
particular vessel at any point and the product from any vessel it can be taken out this is how the vessels are arranged these vessels can therefore be made into a series with any of vessels as the first of the series okay they are prepared in a series in such a way that you cannot say which series comes first and which series comes second okay the use of an extraction battery is illustrated in figure which shows the simplest arrangement of three vessels now the extraction battery we are going to see it in figure in next slide okay by simple arrangement of three vessels yeah can you see the image the image is somewhat blur okay try to adjust with the resolution okay there are about six numbers here 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 6 rows are there so coming to the first row we'll discuss about the first row okay you have three vessels there can you see a b and c first see the letters mark a b and c these are the vessel names okay and you can see 1 2 3 and 4 there are numbers and followed by on a you can see something called as capital s capital s is nothing but solvent mark s indicates the solvent and on c there is something called as capital f okay f is something called as fresh drug ma f is something called as fresh drug and if you can see the uh, what we can say uh, second row you can see some on in a at the bottom of a you can see something called as e capital e okay this capital e represents your exhausted drug capital e represents your exhausted drug and in the second row if you can see the alphabet c at the bottom of that there is something called as capital p there is something called as capital p so capital p represents your product capital p represents your product so what are the letters that are extra apart from your abc yes we'll talk about your solvent f we'll talk about your fresh drug okay and capital e will talk about your exhausted drug and p will talk about your product okay yeah let us go on to the process now so number 1 so coming to the first process okay first charge fresh drug to c first you need to charge fresh drug to c charging is nothing but you are going to place fresh drug to c vessel okay now add fresh solvent to a add fresh solvent to a fourth point mark transfer solution from b to c transfer solution from a to b so how we uh, how is this vessels so first you need to add fresh solvent to a and you need to charge fresh drug to c okay now transfer solution from a to b next transfer solution from b to c this is the procedure involved in first first vessel okay first series of vessel second vessel remove product solution from c okay because as you have placed your uh, drug and when you subjected for transferring of your solvent to c now your product is ready in c vessel okay the second is the continuation of your c ma okay remove the product solution from c transfer the solution from b to c and transfer the solution from a to b transfer the solution from b to c transfer the solution from a to b dump whatever that is left it should be exhausted from a dump whatever that is left it should be exhausted from a can you see e alphabet at the bottom of a whatever dump that of drug that is present it should be exhausted from e okay coming to the third series of vessels again charge fresh drug to a now you are charging fresh drug to a okay in the first row you have charged fresh drug to c now you are charging fresh drug to a okay now you are adding fresh solvent to b transfer solution from c to a and b to c when the solution goes when you charge the solution to b okay now the solvent moves from b to c from c c to a again the solvent moves okay now remove product solution from a coming to the fourth row remove the product solution from a now again transfer solution from c to a transfer solution from b to c dump exhausted drug from b okay this is how you need to do in fourth row coming to fifth row charge fresh drug to b add fresh solvent to c transfer from c to a 
and from A to B, C to A and A to B. These are interchangeable vessels, ma. Okay. And next sixth row, you can see again three vessels. Okay. All these are interchangeable vessels, ma. Okay. So how you are going to go for extraction process and how the piping can be connected? Either way, you can connect. You can connect uh, like first row, second row, third row, fourth row, fifth row, or sixth row. Okay. In sixth row, what you are going to do? Remove product solution from B. Transfer solution from A to B. Transfer solution from C to A. Dump exhausted drug from C. This is how you are. Extraction battery mechanism will work by keeping rows of vessels. Okay, when you expect more amount of single material to handle, so you need to subject for extraction battery. Are you clear? Yeah. Thank you very much for today's session, and this session to be continued for the next section. In the next session, we are going to discuss about. the left extraction process called as percolation along with that method of preparation of tinctures elixirs etc okay thank you very much thank you